Okay, so the the um, if you if you take the um, squared of the wave function, it's, it's magnitude squared. Okay, so that's if you remember your complex. Um, remember that the psi is complex. So uh, in order to take the um, take the squared magnitude of a complex number, you multiply the complex conjugate psi star times um, psi. Okay, and this is equal to the probability density. Um, for finding the particle at a position x. Okay, so dp dx is equal to psi star psi. And importantly, since we're talking about a, a particle, okay, we're talking about the wave function of a particle, so if we imagine that um, that the, uh, um, let's say, that for example, that the, way, that the particle is an electron, we know that it has to have a fundamental charge. Okay. It can't have a half a charge, a third of a charge, three quarters of a charge. It has to have its fundamental charge. And so we know that the particle um, has to be somewhere, for example. The particle has to be somewhere. So if you integrate this, this, uh, this uh, probability density, psi star psi, over all space, in this case it's just a one dimensional wave function, so we just have to integrate along the x direction from minus infinity to positive in to plus infinity, then, that, then we have to get a probability Okay, of one. Okay, so that means that the particle has to be somewhere in space. Okay, and so um, and so this is really important, and it also allows us to normalize the wave function because the wave functions can have a kind of an arbit, you know, depending on the problem, they'll have a, a particular form. Okay, and um, and so this allows us actually to normalize the, the wave functions. Okay meaning that um, they're going to have prefactors and this will allow us to determine the prefactors okay, the, the, uh, for the wave function. Now, um, wave functions have to have um, a few properties. They're, there are a few properties that every wave function must have in order to be physically, uh, to have physical meaning and to have, um, uh, to, yeah, to be meaningful um, physically okay and so uh, if you again since since we have to be able to normalize the wave function then then for a, an arbitrary wave function psi the integral of psi star psi is equal to uh, over dx must be finite and it can't be zero because otherwise you can't actually normalize it right you can't um, you can't basically set this integral equal to one if it if it's uh, not finite obviously Okay, so that puts some restrictions on the forms of the wave functions, and also um, um, psi, the wave function must be continuous. Okay, and and also since the Schrödinger equation uh, involves the second derivative of the wave function, okay, then um, then the first derivative must also be continuous. That is, the slope of the wave function uh, must be continuous. Um, otherwise. Um, uh, the second derivative would be infinite, okay? It would diverge. And we can kind of understand this um, kind of uh, in the book, uh, Hogg's book, I mean, uh, um, in Randy Harris's book, there's a, a kind of a nice little picture of this. If you imagine a wave function that has some sort of discontinuity in the slope uh, uh, at some position, then we can approximate that wave function, I mean the discontinuity in that wave function as a as a part of a of a wave which has a much shorter wavelength. And as that wavelength, uh, we know that, that uh, uh, by de Broglie's relationship that a very small wavelength, lambda, leads to a very large momentum and therefore a very large mechanical energy. Okay, so at, in the limit that this wavelength goes to zero, uh, that is, we have a real discontinuity in the slope, then the uh, the momentum would be infinite and therefore the energy would be infinite and that's not physical and so basically that's another way to look at this requirement that the that the wave function and its derivative be um, continuous. <clears throat> in addition, well I'm going to stop here and pick this up on the next clip. <laughs>